when she said she saw herself in me, it kind of made me centered and brought me back to here and now. And I think that um, I was here, but now I'm here, you know? Clothing is powerful because it's something everyone interacts with every day. It's kind of like how do you how do you improve something that's already been a standard in society, like a basic T-shirt? What can be done to that to make it better, to make it address something else? What kind of purpose do we expect from our clothes? What are we not expecting from our clothes? All of us wear pieces, and we just kind of expect it to cover our bodies and maybe convey some personal style. But beyond that, I think clothing can do much more. We should be expecting more from our clothing. I'm Angela Luna. I'm 24 years old, and I am the founder of Adif. So this is the original 10 jacket that I designed during my time at Parsons. Still fits, still works great. I mean, this is the jacket that started it all. There's blood, sweat, and tears on this, literally. <laughs> First step is pulling the sleeves to the inside. It was originally designed to assist refugees who were on the move from Syria to Greece and then from Greece to Germany. Hi, hey guys. It's all about making clothing that is more than just clothing. I felt most inspired when I was in the refugee camps because I was connected to these people and I could directly see the, you know, the people that I was helping. And it's good to see now as well that um, they're kind of getting a bit more settled. A lot of them ended up in Germany. So um, I'm glad to know that things are working out. So this is actually our 10 jackets. We're storing some of those here in our living room and the rest are at my aunt's house and also in a storage facility. This is actually um, like the webbing strap that goes across the life vest. Um, this is actually the one that we cut apart. Everyone kind of romanticizes startups and entrepreneurship in a way that you know, it's very like rose colored glasses, but no one really talks about, you know, I have like $25 in my checking account and I work two jobs. Keep creating up on the wall because that's kind of the motto that I'm living by. I even got a tattoo of it. Sorry, mom. Until this past month, the last time I designed was about two years ago when I was in school. So keep creating is really my motto to live by now so that I always remember to keep making things no matter what. Little pocket, it's kind of cute. This trip is coming at a good time. I think Canada will inspire me. I think I'm hoping it gives me that kick in the pants to, to keep creating. What time do you leave tomorrow? I'm leaving my apartment at 4 a.m. Wait, really? I first met Autumn because we were in class together. And one day I just kind of came up to her in a very like kindergarten fashion. And I said like, let's be friends. And her response was, I thought we were already friends. <laughs> so I was like, well, no, now it's official that we're friends. I think when we're together, we're not afraid. Like, we can kind of push each other to do things that we wouldn't maybe necessarily do on our own. I think that we balance each other out between, like, stress and being laid back and getting things done and being where we need to be. <laughs> Even though we're on opposite sides of the U.S., I still feel like we're really close. We talk every day. Um, yeah, I can't imagine, like, going a day without having her as my friend, so. Oh. Oh, oh. Autumn's flight got about five or six hours delayed leaving out of New York. So I am going to the Museum of Anthropology.
This happens to be an example of what we're doing today after we revived weaving when it was gone for 80 years. This is the foundation of who we are, the complexity, the intricacy, the intelligence. The first thing we're going to do is this is called twining. Yeah. Here's what I do. I splice it on. I know, because so, I was like, I don't see any knots in here. There's no knots. the fiber clings to itself. <gasps> I don't even like to say that word. <laughs> I'll let you go ahead okay. and see if you can do that. So part of me is actually going in this. Yeah, it'll be here with the museum. This is a traditional cultural practice of a culture that I'm not part of. So to be welcomed into that in such a way, and then also to take part in weaving an actual piece, I just felt, you know, very warm in my heart, very much like I was accepted. So how long will it take for you to finish this piece? This particular one would have taken me around three months. And then you have people like me coming and messing it up. No, no, it's <laughs> fine. I can fix it when you leave. <laughs> OK. I think Deborah is amazing. She's definitely an inspirational figure for me. In the way that she remains true to herself, remains true to her past, I hope that I can one day be as impactful as she's been. I'm running on two hours of sleep, so there's that. I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs>
I love the tartness of the strawberry with the sweetness of the mochi. I can tell this was made with love. My family works very, very hard, so I'm hard glad to share this. Off. It does, it really does. It's beautiful, it tastes good. I mean, what more can you ask for, right? Welcome to Vancouver. <laughs> After a long day, food was just what I needed to revive myself. Whew. Next stop, I'm tired from eating a little bit. No, no food coma just yet. I know. We're gonna hold it off. We're gonna hold it off. This morning we got up at the crack of dawn and we're on a small plane from Vancouver to Sandspit. down into this point, you'll see old growth forests, 1,000 year old spruces, 800 year old cedars, and it was used sparingly and used only exactly what you needed to live and dwell in the way that you wanted to. Because into the 1800s, we numbered up to 35,000 people on Haida Gwaii. It's going to be a fun day today. Have you ever tried to do yoga on one of these while it's moving? Here's yoga paddle boarding. It should be yoga zodiacing. <laughs> okay. Are we landing right here? Yeah, we're gonna get off on the rocks. Even Hydas don't control the tide. The only ones to ever touch a tree in here is Hydas. We're responsible to make sure that this is protected for generations into the future. This is like a fairyland. There was this beautiful green moss that was growing, and the colors were so vibrant. It was beautiful. Here's some huckleberries here. You guys want some? Can you eat one? Yeah. Absolutely, here. Look, this is here. Like huh. candy. Yeah, that's <laughs> so good. Oh my God, okay. How old do you think this tree is? So this is a thousand year old spruce. Can't even see the top. Yeah, I know. It's like a skyscraper. This is my downtown, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and we're like an ant next to it. What this is is the mother tree to this forest. All these little trees here. They communicate through a thing called mycelium. I mean, it's, a, it's a little fungus. And there's a network of them in here. It's a nervous system. Yeah, it's a nervous system. Yeah. So our ancestors, they wanted us to come back and occupy these forests and make sure that this message got, got through. We all exist on Earth like a mycelium-connected nervous system. And if you take something away or add something, it can cause a lot of damage. So there's a lesson there, right? Because you know, Haida's used to live here in a huge population in unison as part of nature. And there's no reason that, you know, the rest of us can't do the same thing. I got my, my ski goggles and my beanie and like several layers of windproof fabric, so ready to go. You look like you're gonna go snowboarding. <laughs> I'm dressed like this today because I felt grossly unprepared yesterday when I was on the boat and freezing.
up into 1900. It was a very peaceful village. Uh, it was a trading village. Here the ravens. Predominantly a raven village. My clan is a raven clan, the Duck Hills Kigaway clan. We have some cousins flying around. Oh, wow. Isn't that cool? This is a little section of about a 65 foot tall house mm -hmm. front to wall. So this is the only section of a house front to wall from that period of time that still exists in the village in front of the house in which it was, in which it stood. All those house front to poles have either, you know, fallen and been sectioned and taken away or were actually cut down and taken away. So those are the ones you see in the museums. The person who carved this belonged to an unbroken chain of apprenticeship all the way back to the first person who carved the cedar. First person who took a tool and thought, hey, I could maybe carve one of my crests into that. The crests that tell the story of who lives in the house that it's on front of. And they're breathing the first breath of life in this thing. Who? And they, they dance around it like that for about five minutes with their carving tools. And as it gets raised, it gets born. And then you know that you're home again. I'm gonna name him Carl. Carl. Ooh, that black one. Star I think the black ones are your favorite. I like the iridescent and the black. <laughs> this is Hot Springs Island. I come into these springs every morning and I feel an abundance of healing because my ancestors are here and I can feel them and sometimes I can even have a glimpse of them. If you know anything about Haida history, um, we believe in reincarnation and my grandfather taught us when we were children, he said, in the future there's going to be many people interested in tourism and interested in our culture. You need to remember, Hyattas have been everywhere in the world. Us two-leggeds, he'd say, we're all one. And he said, when people come to our island, he said, I want you to remember yakhodang, that means respect. Respect yourself and respect visitors that come to our island because you never know. One of these visitors coming to our island could be our own. Guayhanas means land of the people. It's open to all. It does bring you a certain serenity when you come here, especially with your energy. You're so calm and mm -hmm. so centered. And it's from my spirit because I have a little body and I've been told that by a shaman, like you think that you're not strong. He said, but your spirit is twice the size of your body. So always remember that. And that's where I get my courage from. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's for you. Thank you. You feel peace in your heart. And you remind me of myself. <laughs> That's so special. Thank you. We're strong. Yes, we are. Stronger than anyone will ever know. energy kind of just hit me when she said she saw herself in me. 
it kind of made me centered. It brought me back to here and now. And I think that um, I was here, but now I'm here, you know? I definitely think that this trip is not what I expected. This is sort of like a growing experience for me. To be a strong woman is to be powerful. As the world gets smaller and smaller. Usually when we spend time together, I am sometimes off in another world worrying about something else. While we were on this trip, Autumn was my concert reminder to be in the moment, to stay connected to what's actually happening. I'm feeling inspired. I'm feeling connected. I'm feeling like I want to spend more time here. going to be prioritizing what's more important in my life. And also just enjoy the moment. I think that the experience was amazing. I've been reminded of who I am and who I aspire to be. And thank you, I mean everyone, really. Like genuinely, thank you.